Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome back to Araxis. Yes, indeed, it's Planet Side 2. I haven't played this in a while. For some reason. I don't know. I think after the Ultimate Empire Showdown, I just kind of had enough for a while, so I decided to abandon it. But I'm back. I've been playing for the last couple of weeks. Then I get to grips with the new changes and things like that. There's, there's a lot that's been going on. An awful lot. Planet Side's kind of in a transitionary period from its old territory system to a new one, and that's making fairly huge differences. Amoresh right now, as you can see, is kind of clear for us because we don't really have much territory, so the TR aren't really around. They're on another continent. But I'd like to run through some of the changes and also talk about exactly what I've experienced upon now returning to Araxis. So, for the most part, I actually see a rather large number of UI changes, including the fact that they significantly improved pretty much every aspect of it, like the loadout system, for instance. Uh, when I used to play, these weren't here. These camo options were a massive pain in the ass to do. Not only that, but that means you can actually apply camo to everything, which is fantastic. If I want to change my camo, that's going to apply to all of my characters, which is great because otherwise you had to go through every single one, customize every weapon, and yeah, it was a bit of a pain in the ass, quite frankly. It wasn't good. So if you have a lot of camo that maybe is continent-specific and you would prefer to use your snow camo on Esamir and so on and so forth, not that it makes a huge degree of difference, then you can do that. Much, much easier to do. They've done the same thing with the weapon customization here as well. They've just made it generally easier to actually get to all of the stuff that you need to do. Still not really enough stuff for the mini chain gun, I'm afraid. Even if we go to mini chain gun certs, it's like extended mag, laser sight, and like, that's it. Like, really? I want more stuff. I want to... Not that you'd really want to put a scope on this thing, but you know, I can definitely see there being a couple of other possibilities. Everything in general seems to have been improved on all of the loadout screens. This also includes the customization for the vehicles as well. You can change appearance and you can change your stuff around an awful lot easier. You'll also notice there's a significantly larger amount of customization that you can do. So you want to mess with it? Yeah, you can You can do that. You can completely mess with it. They have also added flaming hood ornaments, you know, possibly the most important thing ever as well as lumifiber trims and things like that, which look quite ridiculous. It's actually not showing up there. You have to turn the lights on for that to work. Lumifiber is very, very silly. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show you it eventually. But yeah, UI-wise, this is pretty good. I think what I've got to do, though, is to have a look at the lattice system and show you exactly what's been going on there, as well as some of the changes that have been done to the UI to that just make it generally easier to figure out where you're supposed to be. So currently, there's no alerts going on which is unfortunate i would like to see that alerts are continent-wide events that were introduced to the game and they give you a set of objectives if you watch the ultimate empire showdown you'll know that the scoring for that event was done based on a number of different objectives like whoever holds the most bio labs whoever does this and that well alerts basically put that into the game and they give an empire-wide bonus to the person that wins them as well as a bunch of experience inserts so that's helpful looks like we're on indar right now it's a perfect place to go considering this has the the system in it and i'll show you what's going on here that's it. it's a shame that there isn't an alert to show you but never mind all right let's rock and roll shall we so this looks a little bit different doesn't it yeah the map does not look anything like what it used to so the old territory system which is still in place on amoresh by the way they haven't put the lattice in there yet they're doing it on a continent by continent basis it's taken them a very long time is was based on hexes we have these territory hexes right here and you would earn territory hexes and depending on how close you were to the enemy territory and how much influence you essentially had there that determine the capture time and so on and so forth here now everything is linked up by a lattice system which means if you don't own a lattice link at least one of them to the place you're trying to capture you can't cap it this is planet side one style completely planet side one style if you note the yellow dots here this indicates a lattice connection to something that you do not own yeah the red indicates that it is a secure lattice connection. This means that right now, this area cannot be captured. It is just impossible. You would have to capture something that linked to it. So maybe from the stronghold, they could push out to Feldspar Canyon Base, and that would give them access to the old stockpile. Now, this has a number of different effects, and I approve of the system based on the fact that I play Planetside 1, and that it's very, very similar to that. One of the most obvious effects is that it directs the battle. So... If you are in the warp gate and you have no connection to anything, you're going to go and attack either this, this, or this, yep, yeah? and it's going to direct that battle very much so, and it causes a natural flow, which means that, generally speaking, 
you will have players headed in the right direction. It also means that there's less risk of so-called ghost capping, which means the idea of a small team just kind of running around, capturing little bases everywhere, which is nigh impossible to nail down, which results in this really annoying cat and mouse chase, which is just a complete waste of time for everybody. It also means that to kind of you can kind of truly win a continent. I don't think the snow camo is going to work very well on this. There we go. Giraffe camo, the classic. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Also means you, you can just win a continent in a little bit of an easier fashion. You can't completely win it, but you can lock people down to warp gate in a far easier fashion, which does give you this kind of temporary reward. Of course, as you can see, Luma Fiber is very clearly the best addition to planet side which makes your aircraft very very easy to shoot down it's it's a little bit of bling i put it on my prowler and i eat 20 percent more phoenix missiles than what i would have otherwise expected to see this is meant by the way that a lot of the bases in this particular continent have been completely redesigned and they're working on that there's been a lot of changes to base design that have made stuff easier to defend and with the addition of the lattice system defending bases is now a feasible thing yeah it didn't used to be it abs it used to be pretty much impossible to do that was a goddamn nightmare in the process looks like i may have attracted a little bit of attention let's see if we can get on him taking a little bit of fire already where is he i i saw him around here i've lost my lock on him where'd he go it's often easier to look for the shadow and the shape of a reaver on the ground to actually find them well, i am definitely taking fire and i don't like it oh where from though at least i'm not taking enough to die but uh oh that sounds like a lock yep it was all right i'm heading back to warp gate screw this <laughs> this is not going well must have been the luma fiber they can detect it they can smell it i could reload here kind of get repairs now there are some arguments against the lattice system the thing is that while it does cause certain fights to happen in certain places in a more logical fashion it also kind of means that there's a little bit of strategy eliminated from it because you only have limited attack paths which some people very much object to they they don't like that I think it's a necessary sacrifice. A lot of people look at this game and say, oh, you know, with the latter system, they're just, there's no strategy involved in it anymore. You've just kind of got to go along predefined paths. Yes, but I, I think you might perhaps be looking at strategy in the wrong way. Plus, you know, I think that people, generally speaking, look at the game in the wrong way. Planet Side's a game about mass scale combat, and yet people consistently complain about that. I've never understood that. It's like, oh, it's just a big zerg. Your individual contribution doesn't matter. Yeah, welcome to Planet Side. You have a game with 2,000 people on the same map. You expected your individual contribution to make a difference? No, you, the, the point is you're part of a big war, right? That's the whole idea. There's plenty of FPS where your individual contribution makes a huge amount of difference. This is a game where getting a 12 kill streak makes no bloody difference to anybody because those guys are respawning and coming right at you. This is a game about logistics. It's about killing Sunderers and taking spawn points away, not about killing individuals. Oh, some cool stuff going on right here. Look at this. Hey, let's get involved in this. Fun times. You ended up in the wrong neighborhood, Sunny Jim. Yes, indeed you did. Uh-oh. Someone else in the wrong bloody neighborhood as well. Oh, looks like we have a target. Nope, that's friendly. Never mind. He didn't look friendly. I think I'm going to have to land. I seem to be in a little bit of trouble. Can I safely land here? I guess we'll find out. Flying Empire specific fighter these days is a little bit more risky than it used to be since they, they decided they would upgrade the Sky Guard, which is the bane of my existence. You get shot down quite a bit. This is probably the longest I've ever lived in this damn thing. So yeah, I mean, I, I think the Lattice overall is a positive addition to the game because it does make the fights flow in a logical fashion. It helps as well because random puppies kind of know where they need to go. There's been a huge amount of stuff added in that respect. Like, the, the spawn indicators are way, way better in this game. Yep, pretty standard. If it's first you don't succeed, bring a bigger army. Yep, welcome to planet side. You're going to complain about that? You're playing the wrong game, son. You're going to play 16 on 16 and go play COD. This is a game about scale. It's a game about numbers. If you can't bring them, then don't bring it. Go and have a look at the stronghold. This is a, probably a, a risky venture, I have to say. Not necessarily survival. Long. Oh, never mind. We have this. Oh, hello. This is probably not going to go well. This guy is outmaneuvering me greatly. 
Oh my. <laughs> We're all in serious trouble now. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I'll take him down before I lose. I'm taking serious damage. Oh, I took him down. Can I land before I explode? Nope. I am very much on fire. Never mind. I'll take that. What other changes have there been? Well, we can look at the spawn menu right here. This is just way, way better. These green points indicate your spawning areas instead of just selecting from a list. This is a way better way of doing things. It is much, much clearer what you're supposed to be doing here. You even see Sunder as a separate icons. Also, if you happen to be driving a Sunderer, you can very clearly see the area of effect of different Sunderers. So there's that no deploy zone, which is good. It means... It just makes the positioning of Sunderers an awful lot easier if you happen to be using one. As you can see, we're attacking the Crown, which generally speaking would be suicide, but they have made some changes where the, the Crown is not quite as nuts as it used to be. It's still pretty nuts, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite as ridiculous. Hello. Well, never mind then. <laughs> Turns out I did not get enough bullets into him, but there you go. Killed by a BR-5. That's quite embarrassing. I'm still a little bit rusty, it would appear. I think I might actually get the sniper rifle out. That should be fun. Yeah, I mean, this spawning system is just so much better now. It's so much easier to figure out where you're going. You've also got that instant action deploy, as you always had. Looks like we just lost our Sunday. That's really bad. There's no other Sunday in the area, so we're going to have to spawn at Zervan Pump Station, which means we're going to be going up the hill. Not ideal. Sunday went pop. There's been a couple of other changes that are kind of a big deal. And honestly, there's this kind of constant battle, I think, between the idea of infantry in Planetside and the idea of vehicles in Planetside. This is a pretty consistent thing. This happened in Planetside 1 as well. And it'll constantly be infantry side or tank side, you know, and no nothing in between. And the balance is supposed to be there to make sure the combined arms warfare is completely viable without overpowering one over the other, you know? That's a difficult thing to do. It's a very difficult thing. What they decided to do lately is they increased the cost of vehicles across the board. Sunder has cost a bloody fortune now as the tanks. Admittedly, they did make tanks a little bit tougher. So there, there are less vehicles, but you can definitely still roll a large number of them if you feel like it's a good idea. But you want to do so in an organized environment. Single tanks can still get picked off fairly easily. There's a bunch of different options now to actually take tanks out. Empire-specific rocket launchers in particular. Hello, what do we have here? Yeah, you go down. I love this gun. It's fantastic. This is a really bad place to be. This is a terrible place to be. It was a nice shot, but it's like, oh yeah. Turns out there's like 50 Vanu up there, but hey, there you go. I should probably get a bigger gun. Honestly, running up this hill to try to attack the crown is just stupid. I might try and bring a Sunday up, but it looks like there's a few problems in that regard. Can we spawn vehicles at Zervan Pump Station? It's actually a good question. Yes, we can. All right, good. I could definitely do with making those icons a little bit bigger. I'm going to grab my engineer and I'll roll a lightning or a prowler, perhaps. Oh, looks like we do have a Sunday. Oh, we're not going to wait a minute. Let's see if we can fix that up. Yeah, I really hope somebody goes and shoots those Vanu. They're ignoring them, aren't they? It's like, there's Vanu right behind the Sunderer, guys. Shoot the bastards. Thankfully, there is a harasser there. You may have noticed that. That's a, that is a new vehicle. We now have a buggy, which is awesome, because that's what a lot of people were asking for. They have some Empire-specific gun mounts as well, so there is the possibility that we won't get Empire-specific buggers. You will just kind of have the harasser to deal with that. It's a pretty good vehicle. You can get three people in it. Well, we won't be seeing any more of the harasser because my game crashed. This has actually been a, a fairly consistent problem since the latest update. I've had crashed a desktop maybe three or four times since then, which is most assuredly not an ideal situation. Not at all. This is not good. I definitely need to resolve that if at all possible. In fact, I wouldn't even say if at all possible. It's like, just fix the bloody thing. It's very, very important. Performance is still an issue, by the way. Those of you who are wondering, oh, has performance improved? For some people it might have, for others maybe not. You know, right now I'm at about 45 frames a second. It, it doesn't really make a difference if I'm on, like, medium graphics or ultra graphics. It's very clearly still CPU dependent, and the game still doesn't run all that well on i7s. AMD users actually have a better time with this game. 
i7 users don't. They still have not fixed that, and I think that's kind of a big deal that does need to be resolved. Performance is the one thing that's really holding this game back. It's, it's acceptable, but it's not as good as I want. You know, I want 60 FPS, and I don't get it. You know, and I have the hardware to get it, but I still don't get it. Look at my CPU. It's like maybe using 28% of my active CPU time. It just doesn't deal with multi-core all that well. That is a sexy looking pro. Look at that thing. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Shiny as well. That's what I like to see. So yeah, that, that definitely needs to be dealt with. It may be worth trying just to see whether or not it ended up being any better for you. There is certainly the possibility. But right now, for me, it hasn't really changed like one way or the other. It's not better and it's not worse. Some people report it getting worse for them. Some people not. The game is gradually improving. They're currently testing a new continent by the name of Hossin, which is available on the PTR. I played a little bit of it. It's not bad, actually. It's a lot of swampland. There's also a lot of tree cover, which you generally don't see outside, like, Amoresh, for instance. So, I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities for that, especially when it comes to infantry and swamp warfare. It's a sexy-looking continent. The draw distance right now is awful on it. I would imagine that's pretty much all to do with the fact that it is very much in testing, however, and that they will need to solve that. This is not a good place to be. That's where their spawn room is. But it is still the game when it comes to sexy large-scale warfare. I have got to say, it's still an awful lot of fun in that respect. Seems like they've, they've done a, a better job of balancing things as well, which is definitely helpful. They've added the, those new physics effects in as well. They don't really impact my frame rate all that much, because mostly they're, they're GPU bound, but right now in this fight, which is large scale, I'm like 33 frames a second, which is, you know, it's playable, but it's not ideal. I definitely like to see better than that. Also, the Jaguar is a beast of a weapon. I should really put down a, uh, a turret, actually. That's a mine, that's not a turret. Do I have a turret? Of course I have a turret. There we go. Set that up and start to gun people down as they pass. It'll be wonderful. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. And then I'll get flanked. I can pretty much guarantee it. Anyone coming out that door is getting a hail of lead. Except for the fact I just realized my angle on this is pretty terrible. Fire the bullets. <laughs> Too many physics effects. I can't see anything. This is less than ideal. Also, it turns out I may have overheated the gun. That's less than helpful. Planetide remains this unique game that nothing else really seems to match, and it's still so much fun to do. I would still very much recommend, if you want to play this game at all, that you play it as part of an outfit. It's just a better experience for everybody. I think it's become especially important since transport vehicles have taken a bigger role. Even stuff like the Flash, which was a primarily a very cheap game, way of getting around has got way way more expensive mostly because they they put like a cloaking module as an option on it and they put some more powerful guns on it so they decided hey you know what we've really really got to raise the cost of this thing less than ideal isn't it Destroyed. very much so Ooh, looks like my turret's still up very nice so being part of an outfit means that the situation with transport becomes an awful lot easier and you don't have to rely on foot zerging it around the place. Also, it means that you've got multiple gunners, which uh, maybe you could just pull a prowler and just have a good time and roll on your own. But these days, with prowlers being more expensive, just tanks and vehicles being more expensive in general, you probably don't want a sub-optimal situation. Kind of bottling them in there. I think we'll have the cap on this place momentarily. There's been a lot of minor changes that are, it's really hard to describe because it has been so long since I've legitimately played it that it's, it's difficult to keep track of what's new and what isn't. But you know, the general feel that I get is that it's a better game from when I last played it. And with the Battle Islands coming in with the Nexus possible intercontinental lattice system bunch of other things like that it, it is gradually becoming this better game i also like the fact that they have very clearly listened to the community they they had this idea let's just say this actually came from the pre-alpha i did a little video on it in plants before they even brought them into the game they spent ages thinking of it and they said yeah we're gonna put these consumable implants into the game yeah it was a terrible idea because it basically meant that you were sinking cert points into temporary boosts, which it, it made the game 
more advantageous to those who actually paid a lot of money for it. Which is not good. And that's the last thing you really want. I think this is a game that does a pretty good job of avoiding that. With the exception of a few things like the fact that you... You know, an Empire-specific fighter without rocket pods is just, in my opinion, a less useful thing than a Empire-specific fighter with them. Which kind of makes people kind of scream pay to win. I think the game's done a good job of avoiding pay to win. Most of the weapons, if not all of them, are side grades in some way. You're obviously going to get a few balance issues here and there, but... For the most part, it feels pretty good, from what I can tell. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I just don't want to be anywhere near that, thank you very much. Straight into the middle of the nonsense. There we go. And there is the clear out. Very cool. It's still a really great game, and it's getting better. It's just, it's got so many little issues, and I suppose that's what happens when you have a game with just such a massive scale and scope to it. It's still extremely impressive, what they've actually managed to achieve here. So, I'll be playing a little bit more. I don't think this is ever a game that I'll fully leave. At least not until a piece of significant competition comes along, which is probably not going to be happening anytime soon. Looks like the... Uh, that is a line of tanks. You don't see that in any other game. It's still a wonderful thing, quite frankly. Still plenty of technical issues to sort out. Still plenty of balance issues to work on. Lots of conflicting opinions. Hopefully no more silly decisions like the implants. Thankfully they turned that around and said, Nope, okay, community hates this idea, we're not going to do it. <sighs> but every now and again, horrible things tend to happen. <laughs> like that. Oh, uh, bollocks. Blindside 2, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, free to play, available on Steam. There's a link in the description below this video if you want to give me a silly hat through your referral bonuses. That, of course, would be very much appreciated. I do very much like my silly hats. And we do have an outfit. It's called Brit. We're a little bit more selective with who we bring in this time. You know, we used to have an outfit with hundreds of people that just never logged on. Now we actually have active players that know what they're doing, which is pretty good. And I'll put a link for the recruitment site in the description below this video as well if you wish to check it out. We're a good bunch. We have fun. This is not the place I should be standing! <laughs> have some grenades. There you go. My name's been Total Biscuits. I will see you about.